Sean Berry, what about yourself? What are the questions that you want answered today? Um, well, I mean, following previous incidents like this, the Lackanal House fire, the London Assembly did look at this, and we came to much the same conclusions as the coroner there as well. And one of the recommendations that were made was that fire risk assessments need to be published, need to be available online, not just to, to leaders and councils who need to see them, but to local residents, residents in the blocks who want to inspect the safety of their blocks. The transparency is a, is a real issue there. Obviously, we've, we've talked about the, the recommendations to change the fire regulations, um, and the difficulties that there are with who is responsible now. The problem I think we've got is that there's a bit of a conflict of interest. The landlords, the owners of buildings, are now the people responsible for carrying out fire risk assessments. There's no statutory process of, of signing things off like there used to be. There are audits, right, there are okay, checks, but sure. it's not the same as it used to be. You're right. reliant well, they, they, on they, your landlord. I understand you may have that. Other issues with. That's that's a very fair point. They they. Are you suggesting that the landlord or the management organisation in charge of a, of a block does the fire? They, they don't do the fire assessment themselves. They would call no, in an expert. They are responsible for hiring yeah. an independent expert. Right. When the assembly looks at this and, and uh, the fire brigade did a, an audit of these assessments, they found about 20% were not adequate. There's lots of questions about the training and qualifications of the people doing them. It's, it's a, a lesser regime of regulation than they used to be. And that does seem to be an issue, particularly when it comes to you know, transparency and accountability to the residents. One of the real things that we can see out of this is the residents themselves were organised, they were looking at things in detail, they were checking and making recommendations, and yet they seem to have been treated more or less like troublemakers. And I think that is something I see right across London, is when residents get organised, they're not treated with respect, and they are acting in the interest of their neighbours. They should be more involved in the management of their blocks, they should be treated much, much better. You yes, uh, that, and what I was going to say that the residents have raised questions about the fire safety ever since the power surges in 2013. Towards the end of, of the project, they asked for, for the TMO to pay for their own independent uh, expert looking at fire regulations and, and the situation there, and they were told it was not necessary. TMO had, cons had commissioned their own expert, and that was fine, so just go in, don't worry your critical heads about it. What have the council been able to do in terms of emergency accommodation for those who did manage to escape from the tower and those who were evacuated from surrounding flats and houses? Well, some of the people who've been evacuated have gone back to their homes. I, th I think they went willingly because not everybody went back. As far as the Grenfell Tower residents are concerned, I had an email this morning from a family that came from the tower they're in a hotel in Arsenal Court. They've been given no indication as to whether they'll stay for the second night or what their future would be. And I think that's absolutely outrageous. I think all the people in the temporary accommodation yeah. should be given the fullest information as to what the. Is it, is it possible there. that there isn't the fullest information yet? No, it's not been put. Well, no, I mean, but they could surely be told if they can stay a second night because they've got nowhere else to go. They've got yeah. no belongings, they've got nothing. Why, why leave them in the dark like that? It just adds to the, the horrendous experience that they've been through. It's not we're necessary. Hit, we're just hearing that the Prime Minister, Theresa May, has arrived uh -huh. at the vicinity of Grenfell Tower. Really? Mm. Yes, I mean, she went at a very good reception for the residents. Residents of the area are now getting very angry. Yesterday they were traumatised and distraught. Today they are exceedingly angry. Is that what you're finding, Charles? Yeah, I think, well, you know, we'll see. The residents were angry before this happened. They were warning of this. And I think the anger that's out there, um, you know, generally across London, across the country, from people who've had similar experiences with refurbishments who still have unanswered questions, is, is rather huge. I think councils around, around London, the arm's length management organisations that run a lot of housing in London need to be getting the fullest possible information out to people about who's got cladding that might be at risk and get and do some assessments of what the problems might be as soon as possible. People need reassurance and they feel let down.